So I am aware that I'm a little bit late to the trend because everybody is making tower defense games but I really want to make a tower defense game. Now you could argue that Battle Buddies is a tower defense game and on one hand you are right but it's not the type of tower defense game that I'm talking about. I am talking very standard like tower defense simulator, tower heroes and I think cube defense. You know, the typical tower defense game. And uh, I just really, really wanted to go with one. So, like every great adventure, we start off in the basic base plate. So the plan for this episode is to have enemy movement. So they just follow the path, go to the base and attack the base and that's it. Now you could argue that I already have a system for this in Battle Buddies, but I'm gonna be honest, it's shit. It is so bad. So what the code in Battle Buddies does, for anybody that's interested, is it just adds a value to the X value and that's how it moves forward. It's very bad optimized, you can't make any branching paths, you can't go up and down, literally you can't do anything. And I want to make this system as you know, as limitless as possible. I want them to go up and down. I want them to go in loops. I want them to dig into the ground. So let's make that. So what I have set up is two epic, epic bases. We got a super scary enemy base and a super cute player base. And uh, you know, to be honest, there are just two bricks with a billboard UI and a text UI. Nothing too special. Always anchor all your stuff or you're gonna have a bad bad time and i'm also gonna turn off collision for this one so the plan is to have an enemy spawn from the enemy base move along a set path all the way to the cute enemy base so that is what we're going to code right now and what we need up to set up the path is little nodes Bruh, actually, how do you create a hinge again? Bruh. Like, it used to be so simple. How do you make a hinge? Uh, our epic part surface trilogy has come to an end. As Roblox evolved, there are old features that don't make sense anymore. So, there is like a surface tool now. Where? Continuing this evolution away from surfaces, we are removing the surface tool. Bruh. Okay, so this is the node that we have. And uh, since Roblox decided to delete uh, the surface feature, which I really, really needed, uh, I put a decal on it of uh, lemon. So what I have to do right now is just place down all the nodes... In a way that I want them to move. So I want them to move from the enemy base all the way over here. And then I want to copy this block. I want to turn it around. That's why the lemon is there. So you know what the front is. Move all the way over here. Then I want to copy it. Turn it around again. Go like this. And then move to the friendly base. So these bases are just for fun because we also need to copy one of these and put them inside the base and one of these and before we put it inside the base we of course gonna rotate it and like that. Okay so all the nodes are set up and at this stage we can basically remove the decals. Uh, so I never done the next step before and I have no idea how I want to do it So What I want to do is I want to put all of the blocks inside of each other Okay, so I put all the nodes inside of each other So starting with the first node then the second node then the third node and then you know and so forth So now actually comes the fun part. We're gonna write the code. Yay so I completely forgot that we had to make an enemy. So uh, this is our enemy. He is a very mean enemy and uh, he will be walking around the stages. Uh, <laughs> once again the decal is just to indicate the front. But uh, 
he also looks a lot more funny this way. So uh, we're gonna just deal with it. Super duper awesome tower defense script by Bowie. Epic! So when I'm writing code, what I always like to do is set up the functions first and how they are linked. And uh, then I'm going to do the epic, epic coding. Okay, let's actually do the coding now because I am stalling way too much. Okay, so I finished the code, I think. I haven't tested it yet, because that's always the most fun part about code. But what it is supposed to do, every 10 seconds it spawns an enemy, it puts the enemy at the first node location, then it loops through the nodes and sees, hey, does there exist a next node? If it does, it moves towards the next node. Honestly, I have no idea if this is gonna work, but uh, <laughs> let's find out. Also, I just realized before we test that I never declared reached end to true, and that would probably crash the game. So, uh, yeah. Also, I probably need to wait until the tween is finished. Oof, okay, I, I probably should take a little bit longer at the code before we test. Dot completed. Wait. Ah, let's see if it crashes. This is always the most nerve-wracking. I already see an error. Oh no. Um, what happened? I am comp... Oh, what did I do? Oh, <laughs> Guys, pro tip, if you are comparing the length of a table, put, uh, put this little sim symbol in front of it or uh, your code is gonna crash. Okay, try to. Let's see if it works. Uh... No, do they actually spawn though? I mean, some spawned. Did they fall through the map? Where are they? I mean... Wait, why is he still in there? Hello? Hmm, okay, so what is actually happening? So it should spawn an enemy every time. But even that's not working. That's already super strange. No, I am so dumb. I never played the tween. Oh my god. I know that some of you guys have been screaming at me. Bowie, you didn't play this. Blah, 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 blah. Oh my god, I feel so dumb. I actually feel so dumb. Well, let's try that again, shall we? Let's see if it works now. Oh, would you look at that? It works perfectly. No way. That is absolutely insane. How can it work instantly? What? That is unbelievable. Wow. Oh my god. Okay, but there is another problem though. Uh, they aren't spawning while there is another one on the screen. So the problem with my code right now is that every time it spawns an enemy, it can only spawn the next enemy when this enemy is at the player base. And that is not how it's supposed to work. Okay, I fixed it. That was a very, very, very easy fix. <laughs> okay. Oh, whoa, OneDrive isn't signed in. Okay, but the fix was actually really, really, really simple. Okay, let me actually show you guys what I did. So I created a folder in my workspace called enemies. And instead of putting them in the workspace, I put it in a folder called enemies. And then I just simply checked, hey, did you add something in the enemies folder? Let me move it. And this way, the spawn enemy command doesn't have the wait for completion tag. But I'm gonna be completely honest guys, this isn't enough. Because this is quite a simple and boring system. I want branching paths. 
So we have this path that goes from here to here to here to here. Now I also want to make a path that goes from here to here to here. Then all the way over here, all the way over here, all the way over here. And attacks, sneak attacks the enemy from the back. So let's try to actually make that. Okay, so I created a brand new path and it goes from here to here to here to here. And for the fun, just to see if we can, I also added a little slope. So the enemies have to go up and down. And uh, yeah, now we just have to code that the enemies pick a path. And then everything should be good to go. So where the magic is gonna happen is as this little little segment which says node equals next node one and we're gonna change this one for a little bit we're gonna change it to node equals next node match.random one next nodes and what this does is it picks one of the two paths basically at least i think it does let's test it out oh boy oh uh oh Oh no! Uh oh! Um. <laughs> oh no! Wait, does this system work differently than I thought? I think it worked differently than I thought. I think get descendants. Wait, I need to test that out right now. Wait a minute. Okay, so we're gonna comment this out really quick so the system is broken and we're gonna print. <laughs> we're gonna print path and then um, get descendants okay i want to see what that prints and we're gonna do print path get children okay let's see what the difference is between these two oh okay i know what's going on i was using the wrong command so get descendants actually gets every single child so I was supposed to use get child. So to fix my system, I should just have to change one little word. Yes, look at that. They're picking the paths. Yes, they have like a really big tendency to go to the left, but they are picking a path. This is absolutely amazing. Look at that. Oh my God. Yes. Wait, do they actually go up? They go up. Look at that! Look at the system! Let's go! Oh my god, we did it! We actually did it! Let's go! Unfortunately, since it's the first time me doing this style of video, I am unsure how long this video is gonna be. Because this recording took me around 40 minutes and I have no idea how small or how long the cut version is gonna be. So unfortunately, I'm gonna end it here for today. In the next episode, what I wanna do is make the cubes turn around and face, uh, you know, the correct way when they move. And I want to fix something that, as you can see, uh, the cubes go very slow at the beginning and then very fast here and then very fast here and then more slow here. And the reason for that is because for every distance, they have the exact same time to reach their goal, which is obviously not what you want. So we're going to fix all that in the next episode and maybe, just maybe even add some actual models on top of the bricks. I want to thank you guys all so much for watching. If you want to see more progress on this devlog and want to code along obviously because you can do that and make your own tower defense game, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and you will never miss the next episode. Bye bye!